Good afternoon, Shaky So Cowboy 204 for Forza. So, uh, turn your speakers down for a second. I'm gonna resync the mic because I think it's probably gonna be a little bit off. So, Bob Pop incoming. Three, two, one. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hopefully, sorry about that. Um, again, it's the whole since I streamed through Xbox, so there's this whole trick to having to. Uh, get the mic to sync up with the camera and like that. So hopefully that did the trick. If not, oh well. Um, so brand new season, one of, the, one of the last, I guess the penultimate season of, of Thursday Night Thunder uh, in Forza Motorsport 7. Um, so we've gone, we, we're staying relatively in the same PI class as far as performance of the car, but we're going, we're going back in time a little bit. Uh, we're going back to the Formula 70s and particularly the Ferrari, and I always forget the exact name of this one, but is uh, is uh, you, you would think I would be better prepared for like the car. There we go. The Ferrari. Number one, Scuderia Ferrari. 312 T2. Um, and for those of you in pop culture, most famously, again, in the in the movie Rush, this is the car Nicky Lauda drove, though not quite in this delivery, uh, to second place in the championship against James Hunt uh, in his McLaren. So if you haven't seen the movie Rush, it's actually a pretty good movie. Um, I, I think up until I think that and Ford versus Ferrari until those movies came out, I still regard Le Mans as my favorite like pure racing movie, and Le Mans still is kind of up there. But these two have actually been pretty good. A good mix of you know again you, you have to Hollywood those things up a little bit uh, as far as some of the story beats and, and plot, but uh, they I think they did a really good job of respecting you know kind of the, the accuracy of what the cars could do. A couple of places I thought eh, a little too much CG, but. Uh, again, but that's not where you're here. You're here because I'm going to try and sound intelligent and drive around Suzuka and tell you what I'm doing. And that maybe helps you figure out uh, the, the idiosyncrasies with this car compared to what we've been running. So, uh, again, standard format uh, will still apply. I'm just going to go out and run a couple of laps uh, to kind of re-familiarize myself uh, with Suzuka. What this car does, I I've, I've run a few laps on controller. I, I ran about five laps on the wheel before I started. But we'll do that. I'll do a lap or two, and then I'll do a slower lap just to kind of break down a little bit, get a little bit more detail what what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do. That's usually the better word. What my intent is it doesn't always work out that way. Um, but what I'm, what I think the car is doing, what I think the car wants, um, and then I'll, you know, again because this is also how I practice for the Thursday races. I'm going to do a mock race uh, against the AI. Uh, as best as I can, at least give me some traffic to work through. Uh, even though the drive guitars, they're they're padding here at Suzuka's uh, suspect uh, in a couple of places. So let's go ahead and do the test drive and see what we get here. So we spent a, the previous full season we spent in that uh, the 2014 uh, Mazda LMP2 car, which had lots and lots of downforce, but was a bit snappy. Uh, with the with the rear uh, because of the boost, so I think a lot of us we didn't think we were going to need traction control, but we ended up using it just because of that. This car uh, is a little bit I don't want to say easier to drive. Um, certainly, it's a little more progressive as far as what the back end wants to do. So you have a little bit more warning, but it also well, it's it's a '70s Formula One car. It's not, it's got downforce, but not quite as much as what you would want. It's got mechanical grip, but not quite as much as you would want. So it's just kind of a lot of it's running laps getting used to it. So where it's particularly going to be tricky is out of these slow second gear corners. You've got to be very progressive with the throttle uh, to keep it in check. And, and curbing is also going to be a challenge here or there throughout the season. Heading down the spoon for the first time. Tire should be warmed up enough. Third. Oh, a little, little wide. Okay, maybe not quite warmed up yet. Pull back into the throttle. Used a little more of that curving than I wanted to, but I, I'd rather that than, than risk, you know, uh, losing the rear of the car. Just off that a little too soon on the turn in. Just a lift, though. Okay, second gear here. Use the curbing, watch the wheel spin. 
and onto the front switch. Don't hit the pit fires. I've done that. It's not fun. Alright, so fifth year. I'm down to the TV back position, but I'm actually going to break right there at the access road down to fourth, down to third again. Let the car do the work. Use a little bit of an inside curve ring. Keep it in third. Up here, quick break and turn in. Uh, it's a little late, but here through the S's, you can, it's just channel off and on the throttle, and you can use a good chunk of this curbing and not upset the car. Move up the middle here. I'm usually a little bit wider than what the game suggests. Full throttle here. If you get the lane right at fourth gear, you should be able to hold the throttle and press over the hill. Fifth if you want it. Downshift to fourth to the light. Or actually, to speak to that, it's on the fence. Third here. Third, I think, is preferable. You can use second, I think, in traffic. Uh, heading up towards the hairpin. A little lift. We'll talk about this. A couple different lines to take through here. I'm not sure which one I will take yet. Watch the wheel spin. Coming out of the corner. Head down towards Spoon. Still haven't got my, my reference, any reference on the left side set yet, but it's somewhere right about here. And that's a little bit wide. A little bit late. Go third gear, pull it off. Do the inside, look for the exit curving on the outside, unwind, roll back in the throttle. That unwound too much, too early. All right, let's see if I get this right this time. You don't need to brake, but you can't take it flat. You're gonna have to lift right as you get to the red or right before that last light pole where it turns red. Down, okay, second gear, use the inside curving there, use that inside curving. And again, there's trying to get back. I tried to roll on back in the throttle and the car started to take off uh, to the left there. But that's Suzuka. So let's talk about, let's do the slow lap now. Um, a lot of times, depending on the car, um, again, 70s Formula One, um, we're going to be able to brake a little bit later than, than other cars or most cars. But usually, a couple of things I'm looking for is, like coming down the front stretch, the first thing I'll try and spot is the camera guy uh, that's there on the left side. It's usually the first, if I can spot him, that gives me a general idea. It, it's, I'm braking past him, uh, but then really what I'm looking for is where this uh, access road connects to the racetrack that's where i'm that's where i'm using to break as far as breaking downshift and you know you'll be in fifth gear at this point so i will break it's a quick break and downshift to fifth um i actually start turning in a little bit earlier i think than the game suggests um i think the game wants a little bit wider and then a gradual turn in i'd rather you know diamond it a little bit uh and dive to the apex fourth gear um suzuka is very forgiving and curbing um uh, this car, this car will not like curbs. The car will not like grass. I, thankfully, Suzuka, um, where there is curbing, it is flat for the most part. So you can use a bit of it here or there. The other thing that, that just file in the back of your head is the back of your car. Uh, we're wider at the back than we are at the front. So where your front tires, where you're seeing your front tires, maybe just starting to get off. Know that the back tires are way off. Or if you're just getting the front to the edge. Your back's probably going to get on it. Um, that may come into play at some of your uh, at, at turn-in points on some of the curves if you follow the braking line religiously. There we go. Um, but again, I get to, I digress. So fourth gear here. It's a quick break. Let the car come in. And let the car do the work. It's going to drift itself back out. I might be feathering the throttle a little bit. We'll see how I do. Um, but usually about when I get here, when, when the car just kind of naturally comes out to the left side, I may not go all the way out. But here's another, maybe possibly another quick break down to third. I think third is best here. Again, it gets the car up a little on its toes. and lets you then bring the car back down through. And I want to try to get it on the curbing if I can here a little bit. I get it out. I'm just going to let the roll back into the throttle. I'm going to keep it in third through here. Uh, unfortunately, Suzuka doesn't have... A tremendous amount of reference points um so yeah i'm relying on the braking line a little bit um when you get in rhythm it'll be easy but usually what i look for is when you look at the braking line where that braking line as it's coming back across and it's at the point where it straightens out and it's parallel to the right side to me that's the point i'm kind of looking for to judge the next turn in for getting the essence so it's somewhere right about here and again, because my short-term memory is crap, I can't remember if I'm 
I'd probably, if I'm breaking at all, it's a very, just a very light touch break. There shouldn't be any heavy braking. You're going to be towards the top of third anyway, so even just releasing the throttle, the car's going to slow down a little bit more just from the engine braking. But here through the S's, um, it is just, the, the S's, it is just a balance, balance act between throttle and steering. Um, if you do it right, you should not have to brake at all up through here until you get to Degner 2. And, you know, that, there's, there's the challenge for you. How smooth can you be? Do a quick lap through here, just using the throttle and steering, no braking, until you get to Degner 2. Um, to that end, uh, forgiving curbing here on the ins uh, through the S's, you can use a bit of it. I will be trying to do that. Because the trick is, is that since, since I'm never, if I'm ever committing to full throttle through here, it's very briefly. And it's usually not until I'm got four tires on the on back on the on the pavement. So, you know, ride around with that. You know, play around with, with, the, with the throttle. So you can use a lot of the inside curbing because usually when you are, you're not full throttle anyway. So you're not going to be putting a lot of torque through the rear the, through the wheel wheels, uh, and risking losing the back end or getting it. You know, uh, or getting the tires to spin up. So again, just I'll. Use the curbing here or there. Sometimes I'll do really well with it. Sometimes I won't. I'll keep it about the middle. Turn it in. You know, take advantage. Even use, you know, some some of these inside curbings where you've got the extra green on the inside of that also can help. Can help figure out like apexing. You know, how how when can I really get on the curbing? Well, you can get on the curbing here. Uh, roll it back out. I might be able to get to full throttle between this curbing and the next. It's a very brief, and then just release the throttle. Uh, even here, if I feel like I'm pushing a little bit, if you have to brake, it's a quick dab. You may even try, I've seen other people, you know, just you briefly dial in a bit more steering in just to really break the slip angle of the tire. That will, that'll scrub it a bit more. You just gotta make sure that when you do that, you bring it back so that when it does grip up, you're not then having the car shoot off on, on the right or the left, however you have it steering. Um, this is also, here's where I'm going to differ from the braking line. I, ideally, they're assuming we have more downforce than we do. Um, I actually, we'll see how it does when I get into practice, but I actually like trying to set up a little bit wider on the entry here than what the game, the game's line suggests. And it's mainly just because, again, because we're in a 70s F1 car, and this is, I, I was mentioning it earlier, it's like, we've got downforce, but not more, not as much as we want. Uh, we have mechanical grip, but not as much as we want. Um, so what'll happen here is if you, if you religiously follow the inside line, it, you, it's, you're not gonna really be able to commit back to full throttle until, at least for me, until much later than I want to. And because you're turning in very sharply, I think I'm looking at it, if you look at the map, it's an increasing radius turn. So it's going to be sharp on the entry and it'll open up a little bit. Um, so if I turn in really sharply in here, I'm risking the car is going to push wide. And if I'm trying to figure out the throttle like that, you'll see it with the AI all the time. They, they take an inside line and they, they're too fast and they just push off wide on the exit. So I, I would prefer to be a little bit wider on entry and bring it to the curving a little bit later. Maybe, you know, We'll see how I do when I get up to speed and rhythm. I'm trying to not be so far to the inside of an entry so that I can really start coming back and rolling in the throttle. If I, can, if I can get back at full throttle here and feel comfortable being at full throttle at this point, that's great. I think ideally, I think most of us, we're, you know, we're really probably not going to feel totally comfortable until we get to about the cones here on the right side. Um, but this is about where you want to be, um, and you want to be back to full throttle if you can, third gear, Third gear, yes, yeah, still third gear, up to fourth. And if you do the line right here and just be very gentle with it, you do have the grip and downforce, you can do this flat. Even though it's kind of this pressing left-hander that'll be a little off-camera on exit, um, if, you, if you're if you smooth and you, and you take that little bit, a little bit wider, you know, entry in and think about late apexing it, you know, bringing, ex exiting on the left side. There we go. Um, you should be able to do it flat. Um, I'll see this one. I'm still trying to figure out what gear I want to be in. Uh, you can wind this out and forth if you want. Um, if you feel more comfortable, and again, it's a cadence thing for me, I might be doing it in fifth just from a cadence standpoint of dropping it to fourth for Degner one. Um, getting out of Degner one, I usually use this 
the speaker up here to the left side is kind of a little bit past where the line will turn red, but I kind of use that to judge when I'm going to turn in. Um, and I think, I don't think you really need to brake here at all. It's just a lift. If I downshift to fourth, then the engine's going to help me brake. And I'm going to try and abuse as much of this curbing as the game will let me. And um, the risk is, is that if you turn in too early, you're going to risk going off to the left side, but you can always try and brake to kind of keep the car under control. But I'm going to try and use as much of the inside curbing here, fourth gear, use a little bit of the exit curbing. I don't have a specific reference about where I brake to turn in for Degner 2. It's mainly once I'm here, I've got my eyes, you know, trying to find that apex, uh, the apex of, of Degner 2. Um, and when I get in here, it's probably probably turning in just as you get to the end of the curving. I'll try and pay attention to that when in the mock race. But it is another brake. There'll be a brake, downshift, fourth gear. If you're in fourth gear at that point, it's a downshift to third. Uh, I think on your own, at least for me on my own, in rhythm, uh, I will probably do this in third. I Back to my philosophy of, of if I'm exiting a corner and I'm having to upshift um, before I'm fully out and straight, then the question is, can I, you know, can I do it in higher gear? And it's usually the experiment of, let me try it in higher gear because um, I'm right at the top of second. I don't have a lot of revs to work with. Um, so for me, I think on my own hot lapping or early in the race when, you know, I'm, there's only a couple of us and not a lot of traffic, I'll probably do this in third to try and carry as much speed as I can through it. Again, because I'm in third, I'll be in a little bit lower RPM. The car is not going to be as nervous on exit, so I might be able to be a little bit more aggressive on, on rolling back into the throttle. Um, if I'm in traffic, second gear is probably going to be it. Um, but again, with this car, second gear, if you're too quick to mash the throttle and you still have steering in the in the wheel, the back end's going to start to step out. So just be wary of that. I think that's one thing we're all going to be relearning uh, with this car. So for me, third gear, I'm going to use as much of the inside curving as possible. Bring the car out to the left side, maybe use a little curving there, take advantage of the extra runoff under the under the bridge or overpass. Um, heading up to the hairpin. So I it's a, I don't have a definitive turn in point. I kind of use the camera as a as a guide, so I think I'm turning in a little bit before before here. And this is the you know, getting back to we have downforce, but not as much as we need. Um, I think ideally the turn in for me here it is it's just a very quick lift and back on it's just just enough of a lift to get to put a little weight in the front get a little the front tires a little more grip so it doesn't just push through it is what i'm trying to do it's a quick lift turn in i'm trying to i'm trying to get to the curbing so that i'm lined up here on the left side as best i can now the hairpin itself there's a couple different lines. I'm still trying to figure out what seems to work best for this car. The two, the two that I tend to do most, uh, well, the one I tend to do most is from here, from, from the end of this curbing to then the hairpin itself is I kind of diamond it and straight across and I just, you know, take a really tight line on the hairpin. Um, the only risk of that is on the exit you saw on the test lap. So you've got to be very careful because I'm so far in. I'm having to put so much steering in and then leaving it in and not and unwinding late but i got to be very progressive with the throttle as i unwind the wheel on the way out lest i spin the rear tires up and the car starts to skitter off to the left side um the other the other option is and i'll try and play around with this is right about right probably right as i get past the poles is just keeping the car on the on the right side getting it down to second gear and then doing a later turn in Maybe I'm not putting as much steering in. And it might, and it's probably six and one half dozen the other. But the idea is then to, to be able to roll back in. Maybe start to roll back in a little bit sooner. Maybe not spin the tires up as much. Um, but again, it's it's still this part out. You just got to be very careful with the throttle. How much throttle? How quickly you're getting back to it? Um, you're probably really not going to be able to get back to full throttle until you're pretty much out of the hairpin. The wheel is almost straight and you're off the curbing. This is the one area where I'd say, if you can stay off the outside curbing on exit, stay off the outside curbing. Um, because it, it's, until you get up to third, there's a risk it might unsettle the car and you, know, you might have to back out of it and correct it like that. 
Uh, so this long sweeper heading towards heading towards spoon, you should be able to do it flat, no problem. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. Um, I may try to keep it, you know, cheated a bit to the right side just to shorten the distance. Uh, it also gets the car lined up for spoon straight sooner than if I were to take the normal exit out and then bring it back across. Now for me, for spoon, the breaking point for me is in most other cars, it's usually I'm looking for for that access road where it connects to, to the track. Uh, the braking, I think, is a little bit before. For this car, I think we need to brake a little bit before that. I think if you're braking, if you're looking for that to brake, it's too late. It's somewhere for me, and this is where you know my eyes, I, I don't always pick out detail. It's usually uh, contrasting colors. So the, the wire that's on the back of that pickup truck, uh, at speed, you're just going to see, you'll see white, white, and you're just going to see it's going to look black at that point because I'm really not paying attention to it. It's just much, much darker. It sticks out. So... Braking for me, I think, is just as that goes out of view, as that goes out of view, and then as soon as I start seeing gray, it's, so the braking is about here, I think. Um, we'll see how good or bad I do once I get up to speed. This is also where the braking line is going to lull you into a false sense of security that you can center up on it. Um, this is kind of back to where you want to be careful how wide you are. Um, Approaching the braking for for the spoon because let me move the car over here a little bit so if I'm all the way out right at the edge of the white line here uh, with the front tires let's see where the back tires are ah, well, maybe it's not as bad as I thought um, but just know that the, the back tires are also you know they are just that little bit maybe half a tire width wider um, so Give yourself room braking here. It's very easy, especially in the heat of the moment, that you're going to get like right on that white line, which is then going to put the rear tires across and starting to kiss the grass. The second I go to the brake, the second you go to the brake, the back end's going to step out. Um, it's not unrecoverable, but it'll catch you off guard. It'll surprise you. For kicks and giggles, if you go watch just the first, the first you know 45 seconds of my Norch Life lap in this car. Um, Breaking in for one of the S's there, I did that exact same thing. It was a little bit too wide, and as I got to the brakes and turned in, back of the car stepped out, and it was just, you know, kind of get the feet off the throttle, correct the steering, and then roll back in, but it, it will catch you out. So give yourself a little bit of room. Uh, let me get back to the view that I can actually drive with. Um, this, to me, it, it's I think it's for the first part of Spoon, fourth gear or third gear, your preference. Um, I think on my own, if I do it right, I'll probably be in fourth. Bring the car in. Maybe get on the curving a little bit. Let the car drift out. Um, for the second part of Spoon, I think it's going to be third. Now, what I'm looking for is, and this will evolve as I get into rhythm. I think my early laps, I'm going to be neat and tidy. I'm not going to use much of the curve. But as I get more comfortable with, with getting into Spoon and getting out, I'll probably start crossing over and using the using the curving on the right side. It doesn't seem to upset the car too much, um, and it doesn't cause any snappy moments as I transition off of it. But what I'm looking for to set up for the second part of spoon is I'm looking for that little extra bit of green there uh, on the on the pavement. Um, that you know, I'm not sure why that's painted that way, but it is a good reference for me to say, all right. So as I get to here, this is about where I'm going to break, and I'm going to start thinking about bringing the car back across. Get it into the spoon. This is a late apex, um, so get to the inside curbing late. And the next thing I'm going to start looking for is the exit curbing on the right side on the back straight here. And try to bring the... I'm going to try and bring the car out and roll back into the throttle. It's still third gear. And then start going down the front straight away. Um, this will be This will be the other balance of rolling back into the throttle and unwinding it. I don't want to be so quick on the throttle that, you know, the car starts to lurch to the left because I've lost the rear. Um, it's also one of those you saw in the test laps where it's like I'm starting to unwind it and maybe I get back to the wheel or the, the throttle too early and the car, um, you know, I have to unwind it and kind of let it cross over the curbing because um, I'm trying to avoid having the, the uh, avoid wheel spin by having too much uh, steering angle in the in the car. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, ideally, I'm going to try and stay off the curbing if I can help it, um, but that's me.
We'll see how well I do with that in, the, in practice in the race. But heading down the back straightaway. Fourth, fifth gear. So usually I use light poles and where, you know, as I come down, they want one of my original track eyes. I always I talk about, and you know, my eyes aren't as good as they were uh, a year or so, but you can tell on the right side how the, the arm co just before 130R, it bends out a little bit. Um, if you can spot that, great. Usually, for me, the reference with the braking line um, is usually the light poles. Um, with this car, again, this is one of those where thankfully we've got a decent amount of downforce. Um, so it is the light pole. You're going to, the light pole right before 130R, the turn in, is about where you're going to lift the throttle and gently turn it in. This is, and this is one of those, you don't need to downshift, you don't need to brake. It's just, as you get to where it turns red, if you've gotten a good exit, you're just going to lift the throttle and just gently turn the car in. This is one of those where, thankfully, we have enough downforce. You can just let the car, let the car do the work. Get to the apex, you can use a little bit of that inside curbing. As soon as you get off that curbing, you can start to roll back into the throttle. And you can, and experiment with how aggressive you can be with it. The only danger here is if you turn in too early, you're going to shoot out wide um, on exit. You might not be, or you might, or if you turn in too early, you're not going to be able to get back to the throttles quickly because the car will understeer out. Um, if you get it right, you should be able to roll back into the throttle. The car's just going to naturally, you should be able to just get it out, bring it out to the curbing. You shouldn't have to cross over it. It's another one I probably will try and stay off of if I can. Bring the car back across and set up for uh, the Casio triangle. Um, so here again, I wish I'm, I'm fingers crossed. I, I, hopefully, some of the things that we get in the next Forza Motorsport is that we actually get some, some static, you know, braking boards. Because um, if I remember correctly, they do exist at the track. I'm kind of surprised uh, they weren't modeled here in the game um, to give some better references as far as setting up. Uh, for for the for this final chicane, um, but it is as soon as you get to the red, if you've got a good exit, it is brake 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 down to second gear, and the last tricky second gear corner onto the front straightaway. Um, again, your low speed. I'm gonna I'm gonna use as much of this curving as I can. I'm really for me, it's getting the braking done, and then I'm just it's it's getting enough braking done that I can just almost let the car roll itself through um, between. The entry and exit of, of this chicane i'm not going to give it a lot of throttle i don't think but it's just setting up and to try and abuse as much as this curving on the inside and what i'm trying to do doesn't always work is what i'm trying to do is get the car pointed so that i can go straight towards the inside curving there i don't i don't want the car to go all the way out to the to the right side when i'm rolling in because then you know i'm i'm now fighting with the oversteer of the car trying to get back to the throttle while i still have a lot of steering angle so if i do it right which won't be that often but if i do it right if i'm if i can get the car to this position and i'm pointed straight you know i can roll back into the throttle i can i'm more confident rolling back into the throttle knowing that the back end's going to kind of stay in check um then getting out and then rolling up through the gears just kind of hug the inside here uh, again, give yourself a little wiggle room because you can see those the, the pit tires do stick out a little bit. So give yourself a little room here on exit. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear as you roll back in, and that's a lap of Suzuka in the 1970s uh, Ferrari Formula One car. Um, this is going to be to me. I, I said it on when we were doing the test the, the test laps uh, this past Thursday in in. Now, and again, I make this, uh, I'll throw the caveat, this is with a controller. Um, the Formula 70s cars, I think, were some of my favorite cars to drive in Forza 7. Just, there, it's, that, it's that right blend of downforce, power, you know, kind of chuck the car around a little bit. Um, it, it rewarded, at least on the controller, you could, re it, it did kind of reward, you know, throwing the car into the corner. Now, with the wheel, I tend to drive a bit smoother, but... You know, if you, as long as you pay attention to what it's doing, the, the car's a lot of, I still think it's one of my most favorite uh, division of, of cars in Forza to drive. So with that, let's go ahead and end the test drive. And let me get a drink of water because I've been, I've been talking a lot. 
and let's get into uh let's get into the mock race um i haven't seen any i haven't seen updates from matt as far as how how the race is going to set up Ooh, that's the other thing i gotta change um what we're gonna do i think i mean just for my own testing i'm gonna do it my way it's like i look at my lap and it's gonna be i'm gonna guesstimate 17 to 18 laps and see what matt comes up with um since we're back to again we're back to the two race uh two sprint race format uh for the season so this will be race one it's probably gonna be somewhere between i'm gonna do 18 laps and we'll see how long it takes me it, it could be 16 to 18 laps i'm guessing we'll see but again don't you know if you're doing your own practice you, you'll figure out how many laps that'll be for you but um we're, I'm still playing around with the with the driver tires that I'm going to race against. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but we'll see how these work out. So starting up front, I am going to start the Formula 70s up front. And uh, definitely, I'm, I'm definitely faster than them. Again, it's uh, we'll, you know even even at the same PI, um, they're they're going to be kind of the they're going to be the jam cars for the other for the rest of us. Um, bucket two, I'm going to go prototypes. I'm going to run the P2s. I'm only going to run eight of them, um, I'm gonna, and I'm going to start them a little, um, at least for this race, I'll start them 30 seconds back, and we'll see how quickly they catch the, the Formula 70s compared to the rest of us. Um, starting one second in front of me is going to be Forza P1. These guys are definitely going to be quicker, um, but you know, we'll see. Again, it's back to that. The lap times, they should be quicker. I think I'll still have an advantage in traffic, and again, Suzuka with Avatar's pathing. Uh, especially on the exit of the S's, is a little suspect. Um, so I should be able to catch them. Oh, nope, towards B1. But with that, let's go ahead and start the race and hurry up and wait. The Porsche. Looks like a two Porsches, and I guess that's the Audi in front of me. So. And, you know, as we get into the race, as things come up, I may discuss, I, at least, you know, it's, it's just I'm kind of recurring you know, my philosophies on all, the, uh, every time, as far as I think, Ultimately, as you do your practice, especially if you are on the practice nights leading up to the race or the warm-ups, um, I think with this car, much like with the, with the with the Mazda, I really don't think we're going to be doing, going to outbreak each other into the corner. It, it really is, is timing. It's timing run out of a corner so that you're alongside before the next one so that you can outbreak them. And, and really, you're, you won't be trying to break any lego than you normally would it's just you're in a position where you're on the inside and the corner should be yours we'll, we'll see how that sets up here uh, for suzuka uh, definitely not going to be making any passes in turn one here and again cold tires on the on the initial lap so just and there's having the issues that's going to be having all race so again we'll keep it in third and Watch the force be one cars be a little slow. See if they go off here at the other end of the essence. A little bit, a little bit cold tires. Is that the throttle? They're off. Please safe rejoin. Safe rejoin. Safe rejoin. Hostile cones! Yeah, it's just, well, at least right now, a little lift right before the, uh, right at the camera on the turn in. Yeah, so if you hug the inside of the car, it will drift out a little bit, but you should just be able to... So I got the Porsche behind me. I'm going to go a little bit defensive just to make him think about it. And the 
I'll take the normal line through. You are not, you shall not pass. Uh, I may, maybe for the future ones this season, maybe I start a couple of seconds in front of the P1 cars just to make me go defensive the first couple of laps. Yeah, I'll let you by. There's, you know, talk about difference in downforce. There you go. Let the car do the work. Safe rejoin, safe rejoin, safe rejoin. Don't come across the track. Yeah, so that that way inside line, I'm gonna I'll try and do the the wider entry to see just how much steering if there's a if there's a noticeable steering angle difference. Got a little bit straight line on that Porsche. Even there, if you get the turn in right, you can go back partial throttle through the corner. I still wouldn't try to do it flat. I don't think you really can. Man. Sorry, the back, the, 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 the car started to lurch a little bit. About the same amount. Oh, almost a little too wide there. Just heard the back tire going off. Got the headset wired to the other controller, so I need to make sure I remember to move the uh, move one of the sticks at least, so it doesn't shut off and I lose audio. Well, you guys might like not hearing me talk, so who knows? Maybe that's a good thing. Passing through the S's, I, it's not, I don't, unless, it, unless the car in front of you makes a really big mistake, like that, excuse me, <laughs> I don't know what happened there, um, yeah, it's, 
the essence is not a place I would think you're gonna go side by side with somebody. If you're if you're if you're quicker than the car in front of you, then maybe what we're gonna do is back off a little bit and maybe try to set up a run. Uh, or just give yourself a little room that if they do make a mistake and you've got enough room to get by. Probably going to be a little bit further inside. <laughs> really further inside for that. Oh, third gear. Third gear. So like the run down to 130R, um, if I'm right on somebody, I may not be right on the tail going in. I may back off a little bit, see if I can set up a run on the exit and setting up for the for the for the Casio Triangle here. There we go. That's what I like doing. First straight, then get back to the throttle. There, I left it in fourth. I just run. I'm running the 200 brake pressure tune, and as far as steering, you can do that flat. Good. Get it right. Um, for steering angle, I'm still running uh, 540 on the rotation. Um, I've been debating whether I'd want to reduce that a smidge, uh, mainly for you know tracks with. With really tight corners, with some of the tighter corners, like um, well, like the hairpin here, but even I'm thinking like Long Beach, um, where you have really slow corners that require a lot of of steering angle. Um, but I don't know. I may just leave it at may leave it at 540. Okay, they're pretty. I didn't want to get too close in case in case the uh, driver tires check up at 130R. But I definitely have a run down the front straightaway. Excuse me. Too much inside curving. I should check up. Right over there. inside curving is I think you could take without getting track limit violation. So for me at least a lot of what line I'm going to take into the hairpin is going to be dictated by what happens in that that left hander leading into it. You know if I can keep the car to the right side then you know if I take the wider entry if car understeers I may not try and fight it and just you know do that kind of that diamond across to the inside of the hairpin so. also if you notice if you're exiting out of 130R and you think the car is going to push wide, or that you're just going to get, just without really dramatically changing your steering, just 
out and off on the throttle really quick to see if that just cutting that throttle just that sm smidge helps keep the car on the track. So I'm taking a wider. Oh, that was too early. But don't do that. get past before 130R. If I don't think I can do that, then it's stay behind long enough to see then if I can get the run down. No, I got him before 130R. Um, well, that would be a time penalty. So, you know, for a lot of passing attempts, I think what, what's going to work best is think about getting the run out of the corner, the previous corner to set up, you know, getting a run out of that, out of that Casio triangle there at the end of the lap, you know, may help you get a good run down the front straightaway into turn one. Um, if you're behind somebody here through the S's, you're probably going to be stuck and you're just going to need to be patient. Let's see if these guys go off here. They don't. Of course, I need to make sure I don't go off. I'm a little compromised here on the inside, so I'll just lift a little bit until I get the car through the corner. Chasing the Brabham, I think that's the problem. Oh, he's oh, he almost went a little wide. run I get on him out of 130R. You really don't have to turn the wheel all that much. Maybe you do, maybe you're running 900 on the rotation. Uh, I'm going to have the run into turn one. Ooh, this. Nope, I'm going to be stuck. earlier and we're gonna box this lap and there's the difference you can see the Porsche now has the handling advantage on the on the on the Bravo I might be able to make this work, but I did that badly. Probably what I would have tried to do is to set this up and maybe I get the run into Degna 2, but he's going to put the test on the exit. And 
doing that, you're going to go off there. I'm not paying attention. Thankfully, Spoon has got plenty of runoff if you get it wrong. You won't lose too much time. Give you plenty of room there since so I'm going to fit. Don't hook me. And hopefully we won't have anybody getting uh, stuck on the pit entry. And that's the other nice thing is, is as you make way out, you know, the pits are on the right side, the, the exit takes you to the right side. So it should be a pretty easy in. Also should be a pretty easy out. Um, again, standard TNT rules apply. There's a white line on pit exit. Stay to the right of it and you're in traffic. Um, so you're clear of it. And and cold tires. Getting all focused and furring my brow. through there and again it's a cadence thing. Alright, I've got to run on the Mazda. He's gonna go wide. I'll sneak underneath. to make sure I've got the turn right. Um, I don't know that I would go side by side with anybody through 130R. Um, just kind of given kind of given the nature of this car and that you know it turns but it doesn't um i'd either 
if I don't think I can clearly get in front before 130 yard, I might just back off and try to time to run out of it. Oh, this is bad. Don't do that. I just got it kind of wide and I never really got the car back over where it needed to be. Alright, so we'll practice this pass again. He's kind of the line left. I'll see. Underneath, without... Okay, we're fours are glued. That's the other thing. Uh, if you do... The tires drop wide uh, on the outside. Um, this car is just going to suck the car off track, so just be mindful of that. And wheels interlock. I think we, I think we found some of that out last Thursday. That'd be time coming up right there. Could have been, it could have been worse, could have been much worse, but it certainly doesn't help. There you go. Again, got the, got the, just dropped the right rear off. I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable using as much track as I can. I'm now I'm now starting to a couple of key places using a little too much. I need to rein that back in. straight line. We're going to look for the pass on exit. Yep, let's take the left side. Don't hit me. They are probably going, don't hit me. Don't hit you. Don't hit me. Thank you. 
don't know. I'm more and more I'm liking going into into the first half a spoon in third gear. Just that that extra bit of you know, comfort that the car's not gonna push wide. Put them a little smoother on the turn in. Laps left. Realizing I may not be able to set a clean lap before the end of the sprints. Playing the P1 cars. And sneak underneath them. Ah, that's gonna be bad. When I saw the cone, it was just like, yeah, I hit that cone. That's gonna, it's gonna break the momentum, unsettle the car. Garner Hart, oh, one car. I we did a hot lap challenge in that at Monza without the chicanes, and in the Formula 70s division. Um, Bronner Hawk was actually pretty darn quick. And I think it's because I didn't have to worry about the chicanes. Here's the transmission. It's not the quickest car out of the corner, but that's a, that's an Indy 500 car racing against Formula One cars. So. A little bit different handling characteristics. Speaking of Bronner Hawk, not a lot of them today. I wasn't sure what, what I wasn't sure what the car was gonna do, whether he was gonna go move out. Oh yeah, why not? You can take an inside line there, but um, if, if you even think the car's to the outside of you still, and you, and you give him room, the, the car on the outside probably would hold position. Unless you're center. one there. If someone's on the inside going to the Dagner one, um, discretion is probably the better part of Valor is just to back out early and let them take the corner because one of two things will happen. Either they make the pass or they've misjudged their braking and they're going to push wide off the track. And then you're, at least you're protecting yourself from getting caught up in their, in their mis, mis, misjudgment. Yeah, so the exit curving there is not too, too bad. I still prefer to stay off of it if I can. That would be a time penalty. Then that's still a little too aggressive on the throttle. And the car started to skate. Two laps to go. And I, I knew the P1 cars, well, pathing with the driver cars is always suspect, but I think uh, I was 
expecting the, the P1 cars to be a little bit quicker than they are. They are just having a tough time. Excuse me. Go oh, keep it on the grass, keep on ah uh, Keep it on the grass. Keep it on the keep it off the grass. But again again. Keep both hands on the wheel. Okay, I'll be on the wireless headset Thursday night, so I don't have to worry about trying to move a little controller stick so that it doesn't power off. All right, last lap, third place. Should be able to get the second. I just don't know that I'm gonna to get to the leader. It's a little wider, keeps me out from directly behind him in case some, he does something off weird. Judging the distance, two second gap, I'll probably, let's see if I can get within a second of him. I think it's possible, I think it's, uh, well, it won't be if I do stuff like that. Yeah. I might make up a good chunk of that, oh, no, wow, we did get a much better run than the Brabham. Um, I'll, pick, I'll get another chunk here. But I'm not going to be close enough to attack in the casino, the, the Casio Trigo. Oh, not Monaco. Well, we might get him down the front straight. Dramatic last lap, last turn pass. Unquestionable drive guitars. 154, huh? No clean lap, but 154, that's okay. I have no idea what. what what testing revealed. I wasn't there for when you guys tested uh, there two weeks ago. But that's Suzuka in the in the Ferrari uh, Ferrari 312. So again, this car is going to be a lot of fun. I, I think uh, it's it's a bit more forgiving um, in than the than the Mazda was last season. Just mainly because when it starts to get step out, you're going to get you're going to get a lot more warning, and it's not going to be so severe. You should be able to, yeah. It might affect you in a couple of corners. You might have to, it might bobble it and then kind of get going again, but it, it shouldn't be anything uh, snappy. And uh, and I, and then while I don't think, hashtag me personally, I'm not going to run traction control because um, uh, it's at least the back end is, you get enough warning, I don't think I need it. Um, but you can if you're, if you're really struggling with, you know, coming out of the slow corners and the back end stepping out, you know, run traction control if you need to. So, um, but that'll be race one, and I did 18 laps at 36 minutes. Yeah, it's probably going to be 16 or 17. We'll see what Matt comes up with. Um, uh, but then that is race one. So I'm going to take a, a small break, and then I'll come back. And I think let me pull up let me pull up the list. And I think the second track is nope. That, 
There we go. So yeah, Suzuka. So I'll be back in a little bit. We'll do Yas Marina on the full circuit. So hope you guys have a great Saturday. See you soon. Dreamy.